All right, how's it going, guys? So, right off the bat, I don't do YouTube videos for a living. This is just a um, little Chinese kid in his backyard <laughs> with patio table. I'm not even actually Chinese. Just me and a homie of mine, just in my pajama pants and everything. Sexy. Um, so today we're going to be talking about SR-15 Mod 2. This is kind of a longevity report. This is my gun after 10,000-something rounds. As a general rule of thumb, I don't like to put out reviews or videos until the 5,000 round mark. Just because I think that's usually where you can see where things start to break or some things that are going to be just wearing in really well. That's where a lot of the problems start to come out of the woodwork. So I don't really like to do the 300 round review video, quote unquote. I think those are more like first impression videos. So back on topic, Knights Arm and Company. Who are they? They've been around for a while. They just make a bunch of stuff for Uncle Sam, special operations. Uh, right off the bat, I think the most prominent things they're known for is the M110 sniper rifle, the rail systems for the M4, M16 family of weapons, the NT4 suppressor. Less well known is their 556 family of weapons. This is an SR15. They do have an SR16. My understanding is that those are for law enforcement and government only for the most part. These are select fire. SR-15, strictly semi-automatic and safe. So, getting into this. This is an SR-15 Mod 2 14.5. Muscle device is not pinned. It is a registered SBR. Just some talking points. Different mods. You have your Mod 0 and your Legacy. Those are the same thing. You have your Mod 1 and the Mod 2. Just some small differences between the two. My understanding is that Mod Zeros and Legacies, the rail system will be a Urex 2. The gas block will be attached by set screw. They changed that with the Mod 1. They went in and pinned the gas block to the gun. Um, and then they went to the Urex 3. Now, the biggest difference, I think, is to jump from the Mod 3, I mean, the Mod 1 to the Mod 2, because the handguard is the biggest change. The handguard does not have a separate barrel nut, the handguard itself is the barrel nut. It's an integrated barrel nut system. They call it the IBN. And then when we take a close look here, oh, see if you can see that. The gas block itself is attached with a castle nut. So you're not using traditional pins anymore to attach the, the gas block to the barrel. And the gas tube itself is also attached by a nut. And the gas tube design has been changed from a traditional style to just a straight tube design only. And this minimizes the amount of leakage from the gas system. So from an engineering perspective, it's actually pretty neat. I've never had any problems with it. At first, I was a little skeptical. But 10,000 rounds later, I'm absolutely sold on it. The SR-15s um, and the SR-25s both use this system now. I think it's also the most ergonomic rail, too. So it's just a win-win-win. Seven different sides to attach accessories and whatnot. And... Now that I've talked about that, I've had some requests from some people I know to just talk about how I set up my gun. So I'm going to go ahead and go from the buttstock to the end of the muzzle here. Just looking at this, these guns will typically ship with the LMT SOP mod buttstock. Or if you get the M-Lock models, they'll ship with the uh, Magpul Moles. I went ahead and just put the Magpul CTR on here. I like this. It's my personal preference. I think the Magpul CTR and the LMT SOP mod are the gold standard of putt stocks for all which others are compared to. This one, you know, same thing, and then it just has the friction lock. Moving forward, if I'm not mistaken, LMT actually manufactures these for Knight's Armament Company, the buffer tubes, standard six position, hammer forge, and then they have their Knight's Armament QDM plate, not this traditional castle nut, they've got the... I don't know how to describe it, but then they have these two QD sockets on the end. On the older models of like the Mod 1s and the Mod 0s, a lot of these actually used to be integrated into lowers right here. You have an ambidextrous selector here on both sides of the gun. Charging handle. These charging handles, uh, when they ship from the factory, will come with a Knight's Armament one. I went ahead and replaced it with a BCM gunfighter. I just put a little bit of RTV in here to seal off the gas drilled a hole in the side. Standard forward assist. Went ahead and um, left that there. I know they have some of the gas vents. Oh, yeah. Yeah, my, my friend's here telling me. My, my latch has been broken for a while. It is what it is. Just so it people is. aren't getting a BCM charging handle. Like, what the fuck? This is yeah. how it looks. 
Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so this this broke a while back. I haven't changed it since. Moving forward, you have your just standard Knights Armament sights. In my opinion, these are the best sights on the market. Because the front sight post, the prong on this is a lot thinner than a lot of the other ones on the market. And the rear sight as well is adjustable from 200 to 600 meter zeros. It's adjustable for windage and elevation. You know, you zero it at 50 yards, 200 yards, and then you can adjust it from there using the drum. Getting forward on the lower, what's on the lower? You have ambidextrous controls. You have a bolt release on this side. And you have a bolt release on this side. Now you can use this to hold open the bolt on the normal side. However, you cannot use this to hold open the bolt. Just something to note. Mag release is on both sides of the gun, fully functional. The trigger, right out of the box, what you can expect, nice arm is gonna ship the gun with a matched two-stage trigger. I personally just changed mine out for an SSA. I like Geisley. Geisley triggers are just kind of my thing. Going to the pistol grip, this is just a Magpul Mo, standard Magpul product. I can't, I don't think you can go wrong with this. I personally prefer this because you can put this inside. You know, this is Magpul's bottle core. And they have, I have Lucas Oils, uh, Extreme Duty in here. I personally like this a lot more than Slip 2000 EWL or Frog Lube or any of that other stuff. Just because it's wet, but it's not so thick like a grease. But it's not so thin like EWL that it stays put and it doesn't burn off as fast. I think it's a big deal when you're using something like a suppressor. It's really hard to find something that sticks around for a long time. Trigger guard, they'll ship out of the factory with a nice arm and trigger guard. It's an enhanced one. I just put a Magpul on there. It's what I had laying around. Moving forward, I have a Micro T1. It's an aim point on a LaRue LT660. So it's a lower one-third co-witness with this front sight here. Um, I like that because my neck isn't scrunched down so much. I can have a little more upright position. Knights Armament actually just released their Redback 1 mounts where you have the skyscraper. It's pretty legit. It's nice. Fast acquisition. Um, came across hard times. Went back to this. Still works. Going forward, your X4 handguard, just like I was talking about earlier, you have seven sides of M lock attaching uh, points of attachment. You have QD sockets on both sides of the handguard. Moving forward, I just have two pressure switches here. I have one for my PEC 15, and I have one for my light. I also have one of Knight's Armament's M locks, uh, M lock barrier stops. I use this if I'm loading a barricade, if I'm shooting 90 degrees off a barricade, either or. It's nice to just be able to load the rifle into the barricade. I have a old school Surefire M300B. A lot of the guys saying, oh yeah, all the lumens. I know, this light is real hurting. It's only 200 <laughs> lumens. Full power, Appeal, PEG-15, standard, nice armament, micro. Moving forward, we have this muzzle device here. This is Knight's Armaments MAMS. It stands for Multi-Axis Muzzle Stability Break. Nice thing about this is it's not as concussive as something like a Surefire, or a Surefire SFMB 556 muzzle device. It's what I had previously on the gun. These run great, reduces back pressure, just like the Knight's Armaments stuff. A lot of Silencer Co. stuff and um, a lot of the other brands out there. I like them a lot, they just produce more back pressure. That's the only problem really. This allows the muzzle device to really just seat the suppressor. Um, with the suppressor, it's a nice design. Just talking about the two different kinds of designs here. You got Surefire and you got Knight's Arm. Surefire's muzzle device and suppressor arrangement, they have a collar. And when you turn this locking ring, it seats and pulls it towards this collar. The problem with this, even though it's very nice, it's very repeatable, the problem with this is that sometimes it gets stuck. You, you shoot a lot, they get stuck. I've never had that problem with this. And the way this works is you have a locking ring. And the locking ring inside, as you turn it, has ceramic ball bearings. The ceramic ball bearings, as you turn the locking ring, protrude out from the suppressor 
into the muscle device. So it seats it very firmly. It's very repeatable. It's very rock solid. So let's stick this back on again. It's a little cold out here, so my hands are getting a little nippy and my ashy hands. I don't have a lady to look out for me right now, so my hands are all fucked up. Hard thing, Ricky. Yeah, no, they kind of are. So you can see now it's very solid. Usually with this suppressor, I'm getting about one inch point of impact shift down at 100 yards maximum. And that's to note that this barrel profile is not a heavy barrel profile. It's a little, I've, if I measured it with my calipers, if I'm not mistaken, it's like 0.64 of an inch, if I'm not mistaken. So I've kind of gone from back to front. One thing to note, last thing, the sling, just Vickers Blue Force gear. Let's get underneath the hood. I'm sure a lot of guys are pretty curious about how the gun's been holding up over all this time. This fire control group. Oh, yeah, that thing's nasty, man. So nasty. <laughs> yeah, I've never cleaned a lower yet. Actually, if you want to show that, man. Yeah, I was going to. I haven't cleaned that thing, but it keeps on running. I don't really care. I, Do my understanding is that Geisley, they told me that you're not supposed to be cleaning the triggers. You just keep on greasing them. So that's cool beans. Bull carrier fears? group. So talking about the bull carrier group, what makes the Knights Arm and SR-15 and Knights Arm and SR-15? Let's get it. So the difference between a lot of other guns is pretty much you'll notice right off the bat is that the bolt itself is different, you know. That's the biggest thing that makes this gun stand out from all the other ARs is that this bolt and this gas system. This gas system in the gun is a intermediate mid-length gas system. It's longer than your mid-length, but it's not as long as rifle length. So, yeah, this thing's dirty, man. Oh, yeah. Do you have your Fury out here? Try to shine into the lower. No, nah, it's all good, man. It's no big deal. But so, three big changes here. When we look at the bolt, they call it the E3 bolt, which my understanding is that it means like three enhancements, you know? You got like crap all over the bolt. So the, the lugs are rounded. You can see uh, all the lugs are rounded, and what this does is it rounds out all the corners so they, they're less likely to shear. My understanding is that outside of factory testing, none of these bolts have been broken before. That's the first enhancement. We can take a look at the extractor. What they've done here is they've taken just one spring, and they've made two springs instead. So they can have two springs of lower K values, and they've also moved the location of the extractor pivot pin. So you have more leverage. The LMT E-Bolt does a very similar thing. I think Knight's Armament does it better. And they've also reduced the size of the cam pin here. You can take a look. That is not your standard GI cam pin. A lot of times you'll see that the bolts are cracking right here and here on standard AR-15 bolts. So those are three enhancements. They've made this smaller. As a result, you can see that the firing pin is also proprietary. So the only thing that's really not proprietary in the bolt carrier group is this sucker and this guy. Everything else here is proprietary. You got your proprietary cam pin. Can't English right now, man. <laughs> and then you have your proprietary firing pin when can and this buddy? guy. I can't ever. <laughs> so taking a look at the bolt, let's go ahead and take this guy apart real quick. You can see inside here. Use your extractor. You know, you've got your extractor spring in here. I mean, your extractor retention spring clip thing. And then you got your two extractor springs. 10,000 rounds in, they're still working just fine. Put this guy back together, same thing. Just do everything in reverse. Damn, dude, my fingers are cold. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Chilling. My fingers are hurting, man. <laughs> and then another thing to note is that I've been actually kind of impressed. A lot of times gas rings will give out kind of early. Oh, 
I'll show you guys here real quickly after I put this guy back together. There are two different ways to, ca to, to test if the gas rings are still good. And one way is just to hold the bolt carrier groove with the bolt inserted, just push it down and hold it. And the other way is just have the bolt carrier group sit on its bolt. 10,000 rounds later, gas rings are still good. I've been told by a lot of people that that's something that you need to replace. So as you can see here, let me just wipe this down some. We got a rag. Uh, so 10,000 rounds later, this is, take a, get a close up of this, man. 10,000 rounds later, this is what the bolt carrier group looks like. You know. Bolt carrier group, gas key's still good. Everything's still good. Everything's still good. Uh, bolt face itself has a lot of finish worn off of it. The lugs themselves also have a lot of finish worn off of it. But after going over this in detail, there's nothing on this gun that has uh, given me any sort of reason to worry. You know, it's wearing really nicely. You can see that the finish on the back of the bolt carrier itself is coming off. You know, the finish on the bottom of the bolt carrier is also from the hammer starting to shine. Pretty much everything's wearing together nicely. I haven't seen any reason for me to suspect anything's becoming wrong, like going wrong. Let's talk about accuracy, though. I know a lot of other YouTubers out there, or some of them, have said, well, I can't get any good groups on my SR-15 Mod 2. Why is it I'm paying $2,000 for a rifle that can't shoot good, can't shoot good groups? I, I don't know what to say. I haven't had that problem. This is my primary go-to ammunition. This is just Taiwanese foreign ball ammo wolf gold like wolf is like known as the cancer brand <laughs> i've been shooting really good groups out of that this is my most recent target uh that i have saved i haven't saved any of the others but i can replicate this this is not just a one-time deal that's about a half inch group at 50 yards i only had access to 50 yards at the time i live near Northern Virginia, so we don't have a whole lot of good places to shoot. Uh, everything's flowing in from D.C., all the hate and everything. Really hard to find a good place to shoot. But that's the thing, though. So we're shooting ball ammo, and we're getting close to MOA groups. And we were shooting match ammo, like 77 grain open tip match stuff. We'd be getting probably better groups. And multiple think, people were there to confirm that group. Right, That's right. not him so, on his own. So 10,000 rounds later, I'm still getting really good groups out of this gun. Reliability has absolutely been there. The only time I've had a stoppage with this gun that can be attributed to the gun, or I can't even really say that, because I was out in Texas in April 2016. I ran this gun with a suppressor on nonstop, no cleaning. I had my first stoppage at 2,300 rounds. After that, I cleaned the gun. So 2,300 rounds with a suppressor, no stoppages. The only other stoppages I've had were either bad primers and bad ammo. Believe it or not, often federal. Federal, as I've been going along, I've learned that's not really that good of an ammo. So I've been getting federal or a lot of these old PMAGs, the FDE M2s. I've had feed lifts just, just uh, crack. I've had double feeds from that. I think nowadays... The MCTs, the M3s, and just the good old GI mags with a good Magpul follower is just the go-to. I haven't had any problems out of those two. Um, the light, the, the weight of this system altogether, putting it back together now, out of the box is fairly lightweight. The only reason why it gets heavier is because I've got all this bullshit on the end of the gun. <laughs> and... Was that 2300 dry with lubing or without lubing? That was with occasional lubrication. Okay. But that was with Slip 2000. Slip 2000 just evaporates like water. Yeah. Uh, just, let's see here. What about you, man? Have you got any questions? I think I covered pretty much almost all my talking points. I'd say almost 20 minutes later, you nailed it. Okay. All right. Well, I guess that's a wrap. SR15 Mod 2, 14.5, 10,000 rounds later. Still kicking like a beast, running like a sewing machine. Cool.